When I set out to review every single episode of Sliders, I didn't expect that an episode that premiered in 1995 would suddenly become uh, timely, but here we are. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian, and welcome back to Resliders, my retrospective on the campy 90s alternate history TV show, Sliders. Our next episode is titled Fever, and sees the Sliders visiting a timeline where, well, how about I just get on with the story and not spoil the surprise. Sometime after leaving the timeline when the Americans lost the revolution, our heroes end up in a San Francisco going through an oil boom. People are celebrating the streets that they are now rich, but the sliders can't stay as the timer is already winding down and they need to leave. From the biggest party in the world, they arrive in a much quieter San Francisco, where Wade is almost run over by a truck spraying something on the street, but a man with yellow skin saves her. Wade kisses him and thanks, but this upsets him and he storms off. As the sliders head to a restaurant, they notice that people are avoiding them on the streets. While sitting down to eat, they also witness a man coughing, which makes the other patrons nervous. Later, Rembrandt discovers a wanted poster of a long-haired, glasses-wearing Quinn in the bathroom, but they have to escape because members of the California Health Commission, or the CHC, arrive to arrest the coughing man and someone recognizes Quinn for his doppelganger. The sliders check into a hotel, and hey look, Will Sasso, just as Wade is starting to have a headache. Arturo and Quinn try to get some medicine at a pharmacy, but instead discover a place that looks like something an alchemist would use. They aren't there long before CHC goons arrive and arrest Quinn, which is like what, the third time he's been arrested so far? But Arturo does manage to escape. When he returns to the hotel, he tells Rembrandt that they are in a timeline suffering through a plague called the Q, and Quinn's doppelganger was Patient Zero. Yeah, as you can probably imagine, this episode is hard to enjoy as fun escapism since we are, at the time of recording, dealing with our own plague. And while the Q isn't exactly the same as COVID-19, for example, you see a lot less mask and a lot less people flaunting the rules, there are other aspects of it, such as social distancing, that hit a little too close to home. It's also weird reading praise about the episode from Slider's creators and cast from a pre-COVID world. Apparently, Cleveland Derricks, who played Rembrandt, really liked the episode and was quoted as saying, There was a disease, and none of it was curable. Now that is interesting to me, and I think that is interesting to the audience. Hmm, I kind of want to ask Cleveland if he still thinks that in 2020. Anywho, a now yellow-skinned Wade starts hallucinating, which turns the episode into a horror movie? Okay. She runs from her friends, but they catch up with her, only to be surrounded by other infected. The infected take them to their secret hideout, the third one they've been to this season. Seriously, it's only the fourth episode. Why is this show so freaking derivative? Anywho, the infected hide here so they don't get taken into government-run protection camps, which is essentially a death sentence. While there, our heroes discover Quinn's doppelganger. After explaining who they are, Alt Quinn explains that he was a medical student who was intentionally infected with the Q virus by the doctor he worked for, and then sent out into the populace to knowingly spread it. Thus we learn the virus was manufactured by some shadowy government cabal led by the Surgeon General of all people. And considering all the conspiracy theories we've been dealing with in 2020, this twist aged like milk. I mean, I'm not saying Sliders is responsible for the covid idiots out there, but the fact that this episode was so well received by Fox, who decided to air it after the pilot, makes me realize that a lot of Americans are predisposed to believe the government will kill them just to seize more power. Which is a terrible mindset to have when others are trying to save as many lives as they can during a goddamn pandemic. Ugh! Moving right along, our Quinn suffers through a horrifying decontamination by CHD doctors Darren Morton, the doctor who infected Alt Quinn, and Elaine Stanley, who was Alt Quinn's girlfriend before he got infected. They are shocked to discover Quinn is not infected with the Q, and Dr. Morton is unwilling to believe Quinn's explanation that he is from an alternate timeline. Meanwhile, Wade has reached the terminal stage of the queue, and Arturo asks Alt Quinn about giving her antibiotics, to which Alt Quinn responds that he has no idea what he's talking about. Yep, in this timeline, penicillin was not accidentally discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928, when he noticed something odd happening to one of his old petri dishes. And you know what? I like this point of divergence. Too many alternate histories involve war or politics, and it's nice to show how there is more to history than those two subjects. But is it plausible? 
Well, as one 2014 article in the Saudi Journal of Biological Science suggests, scientific discoveries never happening are generally implausible, because it's difficult to believe that if one person missed making a scientific discovery, then no one would make that same discovery later. The fact of the matter is, science doesn't wait for great men to do something. Even Fleming's discovery in 1928 didn't happen in the void, as there were reports of the antibacterial properties of certain molds dating back to the late 19th century. Nevertheless, it took years for anyone to realize how important Fleming's discovery was, and it wasn't until the 1940s that antibiotics were turned into medicine. Additionally, the fact that Fleming was the only scientist at the time looking into penicillin means that if he had not stumbled upon that lucky petri dish, it could be even longer, decades if not a century, before someone else made the same discovery. Such a delay would make the death count from World War II and later wars even greater. Advances in life-saving surgeries and organ transplants would be delayed if doctors couldn't rely on antibiotics to protect their patients from infection. And for the purposes of this video, it makes the timeline of fever that much more plausible. But would penicillin not being discovered create a timeline where medicine was limited to the stuff you bought from the village witch? Meh, probably not. My research suggests that even without antibiotics, there were other antibacterial medications, like sulfa drugs, that might have seen greater use if penicillin wasn't discovered. But I've already gone off on too long of a tangent as is. Let's just say I find this point of divergence frighteningly plausible. Meanwhile, Rembrandt decides to be useful and rescues Quinn from the CHC, who was aided by Dr. Stanley before getting shot. Moving right along. Arturo decides to try and create his own penicillin, as he has also caught the cue and fears that if he were to slide now, they would just infect another timeline with it. He quickly manages to create some penicillin and cure himself. Afterwards, he proudly states, Rather, confirms one's opinion that biology is what you do if you haven't got the maths for real science. Which is funny since on the fifth season of Outlander, the time-traveling Claire also tried to create penicillin in 18th century America, and she struggled a lot longer than Arturo to get it right. Plus, she was a medical doctor, and I'm pretty sure Arturo is not. Anywho, Arturo shares the medicine with Wade and the other infected while explaining how they can make more. However, Morton and the CHC track them down and are about to kill the sliders until Alt Quinn appears and distracts them with the knowledge of the cure that they have already shared with other infected hiding out across America. Thus, the sliders are able to flee, knowing they brought hope to a suffering Earth. I mean, presumably. We have people in our timeline refusing to get vaccinated from COVID-19 because they think Bill Gates is going to put a microchip in them, so I assume there will be people in this alternate timeline who are also that stupid. Anywho, when we next see our heroes, Wade is in the tent recovering, while Quinn, Arturo, and Rembrandt decide not to tell her just yet about the cannibals waiting nearby. And can I just say I love the travelogues that the people at Earth Prime have created? I have no idea if they are canon, but they are still fun to read. And that is Fever. Like I said, this was a hard episode to watch given the subject matter and how close it corresponds with some present day conspiracy theories. Nevertheless, I liked the point of divergence and world building. The dark tones and horror elements were also a welcome respite from some of the sillier Sliders episodes we've been seeing lately. Sure, it had a lot of the same old tropes such as the repressive government and the underdog rebels, but I recommend checking it out, although perhaps when our current pandemic is over. Well, that is all I have to say on the subject. If you enjoy what I do, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, The Alternate Historian. Bye.